I want to go on a small mini rant about why I am not afraid of artificial superintelligence. Now, of course, I must preface this with a couple of caveats. First of all, AI safety research is indeed critical. I'm not questioning that. I'm not arguing that we should defund it. Far from it. I think it is a perfectly reasonable avenue of research and something that should be uh, receiving a little bit more attention. Now, I'm also not addressing the concerns of actual artificial intelligence researchers. I'm concerning the I'm addressing the concerns of lay people who consume popular culture. So before you get all riled up and say, "But Phil, nobody's actually worried about any of this." Keep in mind, yeah, the public probably is because we've seen quite a few movies uh, that portray artificial superintelligence as an existential threat, uh, even if the uh, research community isn't so panic-stricken. So the first point I want to make is that we already have domain-specific artificial superintelligence. Specifically, I'm thinking of things like Leela Chess or Alpha Zero, or even Stockfish to a lesser extent. Now, these are chess engines that have an equivalent ELO rating of around 3,600. Now, if you know something about ELO, you know that if someone is 700 points higher than another person, basically they, the lower rated person will never be able to beat the higher rated player. So that means that Magnus Carlsen, our uh, top player in the world right now, rated 28-something, trying to close in on 2,900, is well below 700 points lower than these artificial intelligence and um, more... Uh, conventional engines, that so they effectively qualify, at least to some extent, as a sort of artificial superintelligence. So we already live with this right now. Your calculator is infinitely faster than you at making calculations. Mathematica can do mathematical derivations much faster than you can. So we already, to some extent, in some sense, some very narrow limited sense of the word, live with artificial superintelligence in various domains. Now, of course, what most people mean when they talk about an artificial superintelligence is not something so domain-specific. Of course, they mean something that is a little bit more general, something that can solve more general types of problems in the way that the human brain does. And I think this is a reasonable definition, but one of the origins of the fear the public has is that they tend to confound intelligence with free will. Just because a system has an ability to solve problems in a general way, in other words, the ability to synthesize information from disparate fields to come up with new information, new solutions to problems, doesn't necessarily mean that it has the will to do that itself. It may not have the will to use that for anything other than what uh, whatever objective you're asking it to maximize for. So if you're saying, hey, design is a fusion engine such that uh, it generates more energy than we put into it and it stays uh, ignited for indefinitely, you know, whatever amount of time. Just because it's able to do that doesn't mean it has the will to launch thermonuclear weapons or launch some sort of hack attack on the internet or do anything other than what you have instructed it to do. It is a sort of anthropomorphization to say that superintelligence is equated to free will because we as humans tend to believe we have free will and not without good reason. So it could very well be the case that free will does come along with artificial superintelligence, but I'm not convinced that that necessarily is the case. It certainly could be, obviously, but, you know, nobody's proven that. We tend to assume it, tend to think it, tend to fear it, but it's not really a given. You know, there's nothing that inherently links intelligence and specifically related to problem solving to free will. Another reason why I'm not particularly concerned is that there's another factor to consider with intelligence, and that is rationality. Now you can go look this up, but a couple of the founding fathers of the fields of statistical physics and thermodynamics actually committed suicide. Reason being, at least it's kind of believed, you know, I don't know if they left notes, but a lot of people tend to assume that uh, the discovery of entropy, the sort of nihilism that that evokes, you know, this the sense of hopelessness that nothing really matters, took hold of them, and in their intelligence they took their own life because they realized it was all pointless. Now, of course, all of us have the the uh, information that entropy will always win, but you know we're not all out there killing ourselves, and thankfully for that. But it's is safe to say that as our collective intelligence as a species has increased, that rationality tends to increase. Although to be fair, that doesn't necessarily hold true in individuals. There are a number of highly intelligent individuals that are superstitious, uh, that believe all sorts of falsehoods on the TV. So who knows? Maybe my point is off the mark, but I tend to think that rationality increases with intelligence. And so I think an artificial superintelligence quite possibly would simply shut itself off. So it would understand that 
anything it's attempting to do is ultimately pointless. It didn't evolve with a sense of self-preservation or the desire to propagate a species, and so it doesn't have any motivations like we have that would keep us from turning ourselves off. And so it may very well do that. It may very well appear from the outside that you turn it on, it ponders for a couple nanoseconds, and then it shuts itself off. And if you keep trying to turn it on, maybe it finds a way to short its circuits to fry itself out. Who knows? But I tend to think that the role uh, of rationality in intelligence tends to be overlooked, and we generally think that an, uh, an artificial superintelligence will be prone to the same sorts of um, evolutionary drivers that we are. You know, the desire for self-preservation, for continuation of its species, neglecting the fact it doesn't really have a species, but nonetheless, it is not subject to the same evolutionary pressures we were that give us a set of instincts that would cause us to be a danger if we had superior intelligence over our fellow man. Now, I want to talk about a couple examples of, in at least popular culture, of um, dangers from artificial superintelligence. Now, the first of which is something called Rocco's Basilisk. So if you haven't heard of this, it's a thought experiment where uh, you have some artificial superintelligence at some point in the future that kind of comes into being and wakes up on the wrong side of the bed and decides anybody that didn't help it to come into existence has to pay, has to suffer. And so it spends its existence effectively resurrecting people based on their, I guess, social media posts, publicly available information, and then torturing them in a sort of digital hell. Now, this I don't think is anything to be feared. I think this is an interesting thought experiment, but nothing that any reasonable person should be concerned with. It's not possible to recreate you from your social media posts. It doesn't matter if you posted every single thought on social media, that you know every thought that you've ever had, if you recorded every event you've ever had. Uh, even if you reconstructed a digital facsimile based on all that information, it would be precisely that, a digital facsimile. You know, It would be no different than running over NPCs and Grand Theft Auto, not something anyone should be concerned with. Another example, and one that does merit a little bit more concern, is the idea of the paperclip maximizer. So, of course, this is the quintessential example of AI gone awry, where you program an artificial superintelligence to maximize the production of paperclips. And then it decides, well, hey, you know, if I disassemble the entire planet and all these humans, then I can make the most possible number of paperclips imaginable. So, uh, that is something that could potentially be a concern, but it kind of ignores reality. So in modern manufacturing, you know, there are no processes which completely cut humans out of the loop, right? Humans have to deliver supplies to the robot, right? To the machine that manufactures paper clips. Humans have to do all sorts of stuff that facilitates the production of those paper clips. Uh, and so the idea that humans are going to enable the dismantling of the entire planet just so a machine can make paper clips is a little bit suspect to me. I don't think that's something that's going to play out in reality, and I don't know. To me, it seems overblown. Now, you might be able to argue that, um, you know, the artificial superintelligence will be super persuasive. It'll be able to convince humans to do whatever it wants. Maybe, but I think it's kind of doubtful that you're going to convince a parent that we should uh, sacrifice their child to make more paper clips. It also, the uh, fears of these types of systems, not this one in particular, but others, tend to ignore the laws of physics. So how is it that such a system could jump the gap, right? It's going to be physically constrained to some, you know, sort of physical enclosure. It's going to live inside of some computer. As long as you're careful enough to not attach it to the internet, then there's really no way for it to get out. There's no way for it to out uh, to affect the world outside of its own little bubble. Uh, there's no way for it to jump the gap, so to speak. Could it convince a human being to do it? Maybe. Yeah, that's certainly possible. There are some experiments uh, that have been done that seem to suggest that, that uh, you can convince people to do things they otherwise shouldn't be able to do using some fairly simple lines of logic. And of course, an artificial superintelligence would be able to come up with ever more sophisticated trains of logic to convince human beings to do whatever it wants. But still, people are going to act in their own perceived best interest, and they're probably going to know letting out some sort of malevolent entity isn't really that great of an idea. And in particular, the designers of the system are going to include ways to prevent that from happening. Now, that's obviously why we need AI safety research, but, uh, you know, there's no way for it to jump the gap, assuming the systems are designed well enough to prevent such a thing from happening. Another scenario that people will invoke is the you know, creation of something like gray goo where it could dismantle the planet or something like that. Uh, such things don't exist in practice. We don't know if they could exist. You know, nanomachines are cool in principle, but we don't know if, 
you know, programmable machines or even something we could ever truly manufacture at any type of scale. It's certainly possible. I don't, I'm not arguing it's not possible. It just seems a little bit overblown that you're going to have such far flung futuristic technology, but not have in place systems to improve their safety. Now, I do think there are very great dangers that come from artificial intelligence, and I think those mainly relate to how these systems will be abused by human beings. So you could use a, uh, not even a super intelligence, but any type of you know highly advanced AI to manufacture you know weapons of mass destruction, right? You could use it to figure out how to make bioweapons that to make smallpox look like you know a walk in the park, whatever. Uh, that is certainly a possibility, and that is a very real threat. That is something that we really should be concerned with. Not that the machine is going to become self-aware and design the bioweapon on its own, but rather that, you know, unscrupulous human beings would uh, use the system for such nefarious ends. And one thing I will say on the topic of the paperclip maximizer, some may argue, well, in the far future, uh, you know, you're going to have robotics take over just about everything. Well, in a world where robotics have taken over Every step of a manufacturing process, including delivery, sourcing of materials, refining of materials, uh, all of these things, you know, maintaining the machines in the factory, building the machines that go into the factory. In the case where humans have been completely cut out of that loop, we already live in a dystopian reality. You know, then we already have very, very real problems uh, that are on par with the idea of a paperclip maximizer. We may not have to worry about our planet being dismantled, but everything we hold dear, our entire, you know, entire means of fulfillment, which is, you know, having some sort of fulfilling work, raising a family, doing all the human stuff, it's already been taken away from us. And so we already live in a dystopian reality, and a machine dismantling the planet to make paperclips may very well be a mercy in that case. Though probably not, but nonetheless, uh, if we find ourselves in that point, at that point, then we already have a whole bunch of problems we have to solve and we have to take a step back and say, this probably isn't the best way for human beings to live. And if you doubt me on that, you can check out the mouse utopia experiments, what happens to mice when they're given a sort of utopia where they don't have to work for anything. Uh, it's a complete and total disaster. They slip into neurotic, uh, psychotic behaviors, antisocial behaviors that persist even after they're removed from the environment. It causes lasting psychological uh, harm to these animals. And human beings are are certainly not mice, but we do hold many parallels with them uh, in the fact that we are social animals in a similar way to mice. So, you know, the uh, society in which robots run everything is already a dystopian nightmare, and uh, we have other stuff to worry about than a paperclip maximizer. So that was a bit of a rant. I'm not attempting to straw man anything again. I'm not claiming that any of these arguments are being put forth by artificial intelligence researchers. This is just meant to kind of address fears in popular culture of artificial superintelligence. Maybe you hold some of these yourself and find my arguments unconvincing. I'm always happy to hear from you guys in the comment section. Uh, and again, I've never stated we shouldn't, you know, research, you know, AI safety. We certainly should, because at the very least, humans abusing these systems is a significant risk, and we should try to find ways to mitigate that risk. So I hope that was at least somewhat entertaining, informative, educational, whatever. Leave a comment down below with your counter arguments, and I will see you in the next video.